Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 43. And the famine was sore in the land. Yeah, the famine is God. He, he, he's judging you. He's angry with you. He wants your attention. And it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn, which they had bought out of Egypt. We're talking about Jacob and his family. The, their father said unto them, Go again. Buy us a little food. Buy us a lot of food. And Judah spake unto him, Judah speaks up, saying, The man is found six times. The man, not governor, not the Egyptian, the man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. Judah's like, I ain't going. If thou will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. Okay, Dad, Benjamin, or we die. That's it. But if thou will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. You gotta have Benjamin. And Israel said, Wherefore does dealeth ye so ill with me, as to tell the man whether he had yet a brother? Now he's blaming his sons. And they said, The man asked us straightly of our state, of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have you another brother? They had no idea by the questions of Joseph what he was going to do. They don't even know it's Joseph. And we told him according to the tenor of these words. Could we certainly know that he would say, bring your brother down? No. They had no idea. And Judah said unto Israel his father, send the lad with me. Now, Reuben tried that, verse 42, 37, 38, but we already showed you Genesis 35, 22. He slept with his father's wife, and I ain't going to trust you. Now Judah steps in. Judah is the next boy out of trouble. Simeon, I mean, excuse me, Reuben had slept with his father's wife. Simeon and Levi had killed a bunch of men out of deceit and lies. Up steps Reuben. And Judah said, uh, up steps Judah. And Judah said unto Israel his father, send the lad with me. So he's still young. Benjamin and we will arise and go we will go no son no go the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel if you ain't got the son of Jesus Christ don't go don't go with oh look at my sign for abortion or come homeless have all the all the free fried chicken you want We'll fix your lip problem. If you don't have the sun, you don't go. Now you got the sun, you better go. Because you need that corn to make bread. Oh, okay. That we may live. Uh oh. And not die. Uh oh. So this is life or death. Both we and our and thou and also our little ones. Now, okay, now this is important. If you mark your Bible, mark it. 
I will be the surety for him. Now, Simeon says over here, slay my two sons. You gotta ask yourself, no, I don't know, but let, let's look at this for a moment. Let's say he didn't like his two sons. <laughs> Judah steps up to the plate and says, I will be the surety of those of that boy. Of my hand shall thou require him. If I if I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. And God looked down from heaven and said, Son, that's the family you're going to be born of right there. Judas took up the plate and said, hey, not my sons, not them people, me. And you better believe I'll bring Benjamin back or it's on me. Now you want a surety of your salvation found in the Testament, here it is. Because Jesus Christ will bring the Son. Who's the Son? Those that believe on Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit become the children, sons of God. You better believe I'll bring the Son back, Father. If they are your sons, and by the by the, the finished work of Calvary and the empty tomb and by the Holy Spirit, they we are the children of God. You better believe that Judah is going to bring home the sons, all of them. <coughs> <coughs> For except we had lingered, surely now we had returned this second. <laughs> look, look at Judah say this thought. Dad, if we had not farted around here, we would be coming back with the food. But you want to. So Israel, Jacob, is spending so much time. Oh, I want to bring my son. Judah's like, we could have been back by now, Dad. You know? And their father, Israel, said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take the best fruits in the land of your vessel in your vessel. So there's stew for fruits. Okay? We're gonna learn something here. And carry down the man. That's how that's really a present. That's Jacob's that's his method of operation. I'm gonna give you a present, I'm gonna give them a present. This is a present, there's a present, there's a present, everywhere a present, present. A little bomb, and that is a sweet odor or healing, it soothes. A little honey, it's a natural sweetener, spices and myrrh, that's medicine, nuts and almonds. Now we got nuts, almonds, and we got fruits, but man can't survive on that. You gotta get bread. And you can't get today's tainted bread. Bread back then was fresh. It was probably most delicious with the, with the fresh turning of the butter. Listen, you didn't see these Bible people, you know, 200, 300, 400 pounds. They ate butter and bread and they walked and they got the sheep and they walked down to the water and got the bucket of water and carry it back. The problem is with Americans and the food that we have today is we, me, myself, are not exercising as we're eating. That's the problem. And then they're putting chemicals into our food, but that's another story. Take double money in your hand. The money has not failed. Now, America had a time in her history called the Depression. The money fell. It was no useless. You could have chopped it up and used it in your salad. There were soup kitchens all over the world. I mean, over the United States. There were families that on farms that actually ate good meals. My grandparents would tell me, I mean, it wasn't be a full meal, but there was a meal and it satisfied you. Now we're reaching here, the food is gone. But we got plenty of money. Jacob says, just take double the money, you know, because we can't eat the money. Ain't good to you no good. 
America making it the point that so we got all the money, but we ain't got no food. What are you gonna do? Stick them up. Give me your money. Here, take it. Ain't worth nothing. You got any bread? Take double money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sack. So they're going down with three times as much money as they went the first time. Bring back the money that, that was in your sacks. That's probably an oversight. I don't know how that happened, but take that money. And then take double. Just in case you get fined for stealing or being with the money. Take double the money in your hand and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks. Carry it again in your hand. Peradventure, it was an oversight. It could have been. Take also your brother and arise and go again unto the man. Now, let's go over to Job 2 4. You say, what are we going to go to Job 2 4 for? We're going to see that Jacob, Israel, has been broken. We've seen with Isaac and Rebecca, they had their favorite son. Israel, Jacob, had his favorite son. Now he's got this favorite son in Job 2 4. We will find that Jacob has been broken. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. I got to give you Benjamin because we got to eat. You know, if it wasn't for food, you know Benjamin would never gone. And Satan knows the operation of man. The Bible says in 1 John, is the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, lust of the flesh, pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. And all three he used on Jesus. What's the one he used on Jesus you see here? Oh, if you're hungry, Jesus, just turn these rocks into bread. And the Bible speaks about a st the stomach being a god. And the man in Proverbs chapter 30 says, Lord God, please let me not be so broke, so no money that I have to steal from my food. It's got to be agony if you are on a life raft somewhere in the middle of any ocean. And you got no water and no food. What can you do to give up? There, there was a time when I grew up, I, don't, I forget what the period is, I, I assume it's a true story, that an airplane crashed in a mountain somewhere, and they were eating the dead bodies to survive. And we look at people today, there are criminals that will steal women or people, and they will eat, chop up their bodies, put it in the freezer, and, eat. and there was, that happened in one of the states in America, and the cop that arrested one of them people, got emotionally and physically sick as he finally realized, wait a minute, I was having dinner at that guy's house. We got to realize that man, he needs number one, air, most of all. Number two, it's not beer, he needs water. You will die quicker without water than you will with food, and then number three, you need food. Jacob's got to the point, they're so low on food, all right, take, he doesn't put a fight up. This is the last boy of Benjamin, I mean, yeah, it's Benjamin, of Rachel. He's already protected this boy. But we are in the midst, and we'll get a, a year later, we are in the midst of the seven years famine and nuts and apples and anything like that is not going to do you no good. Go unto the man and God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send you he may send you away your other brother Simeon and Benjamin 
If I bereave of my children, I am bereaved. And notice here too, your other brother, you can't name him? You see what Jacob's attitude was? You can't even, I mean, why not send away your, send away Simon, Simeon, and Benjamin? No, he's your other brother. And the, and the men took their that present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and rose up and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of the house, Bring these men home, and slay, food, not them, and make ready. For these men shall dine with me at noon. That sounds good, doesn't it? But man, he's going to put anxiety on his brothers. Joseph is cruel. He could have walked up to him. Hi, guys, what's happening? <laughs> he talks to his servants. <coughs> Make dinner and invite him in my house. And the man, oh, now we're going, the man, another man. The man did as Joseph bade. And the man brought the man, the man, the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. This will be the Jews that fear Jesus Christ when he comes. They're in the midst of tribulation right now, no food, troubles, and problems in the world. And Joseph's coming. And they don't even know who Joseph is. How's that for a second coming of Jesus Christ coming for the Jews? And let's see. There are 12 boys. One is not. There's 11. Another one is in prison. That's 10. All right. That's two boys not mentioned. Joseph and Simeon. And don't you know of the 144,000, there's two tribes missing. How about that? And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time, are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us, and fall upon us and take us for bondmen in our asses. Oh no, you're going to find out that the money is taken. We're not ever going to go home again. <laughs> this is it. We're done. We're going to be Egyptian slaves. No, the book of Exodus, you'll be Egyptian slaves, but not now. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house. And they communed with him at the door of the house. <laughs> they're, they're scared. They are frightened. And said, Oh, sir, we came indeed down the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we came to the inn, now they're telling the truth, we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of the net sack. Our money in full weight. And we have brought it again in our hands. We didn't steal it. Honest, sir. We didn't steal We brought it. Something happened. I don't know what happened. What are we here? And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. That's one way to get the truth out of them. And he, the steward, said, Peace be unto you. Fear not. That's all like Jesus. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasures in your sacks. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto him. Now, now they're sitting like that. Why? <laughs> What's going on here? Why would that guy, a steward of an Egyptian, the governor, put the money? Is he trying to fraud us? And then he, he lets Simeon out of jail. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house 
and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. He's taking care of them. They're, this is weird. And they made ready the, the present against Joseph. Came at noon. Now what that means is they got the present by Jacob. And they're waiting for Joseph. When Joseph comes in, the first thing he's going to see is the presents. Sound familiar with, with Jacob? Remember the loaves he sent off to his brother Esau? Came at noon. For they heard that they should eat bread there. They don't know why. They don't know what's going on. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. Go back to Genesis 37 and see that one. There's the sheaves. So they've given him the honey, the nuts, the medicines, the spices. And he, Joseph, asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spank? That's a title of respect. Now I've heard that expression, the old man, the old woman, of uh, not respect. Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down, they bowed their heads and made of ob I don't know how to say that word. Thirty-seven, seven. Thirty-seven, seven. Joseph knows what's happening. The boys don't. His brothers don't have no idea what they're doing. That they got angry at Joseph for that dream. And here they're doing that dream. No one elbows the other one and says, hey, Isn't this like deja vu? Didn't we hear something about this? Shh, 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 we're in trouble. Shut up. Will you? And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin. His mother's son, Rachel. And said, Is this your younger brother whom he spanked unto me? It's been over. What was it? Joseph was what? 20 years old? 30 years old. It's been over, over 37 years at least. A minimum, bare minimum, he has seen Benjamin. Benjamin's changed. He's grown up more. And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his balls did yearn upon his brother. He says inside, he, he wants to break out. He wants to start crying on the spot. He's about to have diarrhea emotions. And he saw it, where did we? And he entered into his chamber, his bedroom. And wept there. He goes in his bedroom, closes the door. <laughs> it's him. It's him. He watched, and he's still, he's not. And I don't know if chapter 44, if he plans this. I don't know, we don't know what plans he has for his brothers yet, but he has purpose that he's not going to reveal himself yet. Because he could have done it right there. So he washed his face and went out and reframed himself and said, Set on bread. He is not making them known who he is for a reason. I don't know if chapter 44 is in his thoughts. I don't know why 44 happens. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I don't know why he just didn't break down right there and there. But one special part, Lord willing, coming 44 could be the reason. And it points out one son again, but let's read on. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves. Now look at the prejudice here. Because the Egyptians might not eat bread with Hebrews. I'm telling you, Africans are more prejudicial than anybody else. I am not going to sit down with a Hebrew. So there's the Hebrews right there. And the Egyptians acknowledge the Hebrews. 
They are God's people, and the world says, I don't want to have anything to do with them. Now, you want to see something else? Look at chapter 46, 34. By the way, that abomination, that's the first place abomination shows up in the Bible, and it's about the world who doesn't want to be with God's people. 46, 34. Pages on sticking. 4634. This is the second place abomination shows up. You would think it'd be about God, all right? Let's read it. That they should that ye shall say the servants trade have been cattle from our youth, even unto now. But we and also our fathers that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. We do not want to sit with God's people, and we do not want your shepherd. I think there's one more. Check this reference here. I got tons of references there. <coughs> oh. All right, Exodus 8, 26, for the third abomination, the third one in the Bible. Surely this one has to involve God. So the first abomination, we don't want to be with God's people. The second abomination, we don't want the, the, the shepherd. Jesus said, I'm the shepherd, John 10. Exodus 8, 20, what did I say? Oh, I got to find it. Oh, 8, 26. And Moses said, Is it not me so to do? For we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians. What's this abomination? The abomination that the Egyptians don't want to have any sacrifice of God's people. And God's people's sacrifice are the true sacrifices. Today would be the blood of Jesus Christ. The world don't want that. The world does not want the shepherd today. They rather have another shepherd. And the world sure does not want to deal with Christians. They don't want to do. That's the first three times abomination shows up in the Bible. And it is the Egyptians being the prejudicial. So we learn something about Joseph now. He even says here, he may be their governor, but they don't sit down and eat with him. The Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. All right, we're not done yet. And they sat before him. All right, here they're sitting at the table. You want to go far on this one? We read about the servant, right? So the servant is in with them. And there are 12 men eating at a table. The Last Supper, the Lord Jesus Christ with his disciples. Isn't that interesting? And they sat before him, the firstborn, according to his birthright. That would be Reuben. And the youngest, according to his youth. All the way down at the 12, well, be 11, because Joseph took, at the 11th seat. Is Benjamin seen and it's going Reuben Simeon Levi uh, uh, Judah Dan and all the way down there and, and watch this watch this and the younger according to his youth and the men marveled one they're looking at each other like Reuben Simeon Levi Judah Dan Benjamin Let's do this again. Rubens, <laughs> we are seated in our birth order seats right now. And they saw that right away. This is not like, they, they, wait a minute, uh, Judah? They, they're all like, okay, now this is just totally weird. 
to add of the weird that is going on in Egypt. We got our money back and now we're all seated here. We're not being charged as criminals. And now we are seated to our birthright. What is going on here? And wouldn't it be funny? I have to check where I forget. Between the tenth son born of Jacob and the twelfth son, Benjamin, wouldn't it be funny number eleven seat would have been Joseph sitting there? Wouldn't that be weird? What is it? I don't the Bible doesn't say, but if that happened, if that was a possibility, then right there the light should start going on and it don't. And you know that the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ never had any idea while they walked the three and a half years with him? He kept telling me, he said, listen, before I die, they're going to mock me. They're going to crucify me. I'm going to be resurrected the third day. When it came to the third day, they had no idea. And he took and sent messes. You say, well, what is that? That's a Navy word. I was in the Navy. It's called the mess hall. I think it's in the Army, too, where you go eat. So food is being brought out unto them from before him. So I guess he's not seated. He's standing or sitting, and here comes the food. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. His brother gets, woohoo, he got 14 helpings at the, at the, at the uh, buffet. He's got a pile all the way up here, and they're all looking at him like, Well, Benjamin, what'd you do to please him? Five times so much as any of theirs. So, let's say they had a steak. Benjamin's got five. He's got, let's say he's got a baked potato. Benjamin's got five. If they got 20 pieces of corn, he's got a hundred. And they drank and were merry with him, Joseph. And yet he does not, they do not ever know who they're dining with. I, it's, 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 it's one of them stories like, wow. You figured, I don't know, if, if that was, I, I I don't know. I, hey, here I am, boys. This is me. But God's got greater things to happen.